Welcome to lesson 1.3. We are looking for common factors in multiples throughout this lesson. We've already looked at greatest common factor and common factors where we've used t-charts and then also trees to find those prime factorizations. Today we're going to build on to that. So I'm looking at your notes packet and I'd like you to turn to page 15. So in your notes packet, page 15 is where we are. Notice at the top we're on slide 5. We are going to use the greatest common factor to find uh, a factored form of an expression. So this is a challenging task that uh, I know is important when we move to algebra. They are trying to introduce it here with some whole numbers just so that we get the idea and hopefully we can kind of apply this later on as well. So slide five, learn. Use the greatest common factor with the distributive property. Express 12 divided, nope, that should be plus. Sorry, my light's not so good here. So express 12 plus 20 as a product of the greatest common factor of the numbers and another sum. What they're really telling me to do is factor out the GCF. So let's factor out the greatest common factor. Well, if you notice over here, they're showing us kind of a hint. To find the greatest common factor, a tree method will always work. T-charts will also work if you're extremely careful, and also a ladder method. I will show you a couple of these to get us going. So let's take 12 and 20 and break them into trees. Maybe you'll say 12 is the same as 3 times 4, and you'd be right. We want to circle any prime numbers, and 3 is prime. 4 is composite. We'll break it down into 2 times 2. Both of these numbers are prime. Let's circle them. And this tree is complete. I will caution you, don't bring this 3 down and circle it another time, because then you'll end up with the wrong factorization. Let's take this 20 and break it into 2 factors that will work. Well, here I know we could use 2 times 10. 2 happens to be prime, so we circle it, and 10 is composite, so we're going to break it down again. This is the same as 5 times 2, or 2 times 5, and both of these numbers, if you remember, are prime. Well, in order to find our greatest common factor, we're going to refer back to what we've been doing with our trees. With all good trees, we chop them down, or at least we line up the factorizations in order. So let's go from least to greatest for 12. We would grab the prime factors of 2, another 2, and a 3. Remember, with factorizations, we use multiplications, so that's what I'm showing you here. And you can double check. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. This checks out. Let's look at 20. We need to take our prime factors from our factorization tree and order them. So I see a 2, I see another 2, and I see a 5. And we have all of our prime factors, so I will show that with some multiplication because these are factorizations. The next skill I hope you remember is looking for the common pairs that they both share. So I notice that they both have a pair of twos, and they both have another pair of twos. So in order to find the greatest common factor, which we want to factor out of this expression, we would take one group of two times the second group of two that we circled. We're circling our pairs and recording them once, and two times two is actually four. What that means is the greatest common factor that I can divide into both 12 and 20 is 4. I'm going to divide both of these numbers by the GCF, or the greatest common factor. I'm also going to show up here in front of parentheses. And we're going to take a look at what that means in just a moment. Well, notice that it also says that we are going to use the leftovers from 12 and the leftovers from 20. What they mean is, look back at our factorization, and do you notice anything left? What didn't we circle? What didn't have a match? Well, there's a leftover 3 from the first term, or the first number, and there's a leftover 5 from the second term, or the second number. Well, this is actually what they want for a final answer, but my question to you is, does it make any sense? And right now, it probably doesn't make much. So we want to look at another way to think of this. If I have 12 plus 20, the original numbers I'm given, what total do we get? So really, remember, I'm just doing a check over here. I'm just trying to get at the understanding of this. Well, 2 plus 0 is 2, and 1 plus 2 in the tens place gets me 3 tens. I'm going to get a result of 32, so I'm thinking about that. I want to see if that happens with the same factored expression. So it's a factored expression that we're getting at today. Will it work? Well, let's try it. What this shows me is I have four groups. My GCF acts like the group indicator. So I have four groups. Sometimes I call those suitcases. And in the suitcase, I have three of something and five of something else. So usually I have chihuahuas and jelly beans. So I have four groups. And in each suitcase, in each of those four suitcases, I have three chihuahuas and five jelly beans. 
We want to see if it checks out. So I'm going to kind of think over here. I'm going to draw four groups. I'm going to kind of branch this out. This is not a tree. This is just me thinking about my suitcases. So I have three of the first thing, five of the second. So three chihuahuas, five jelly beans. 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 If I really were to combine these together, when I combined three plus three plus three plus three, what do we get? Well, three times four is 12. I'm gonna get 12 chihuahuas. Let's take a look at this again. I have five jelly beans plus five more jelly beans plus five more jelly beans plus five more jelly beans. Well, five times four is actually 20. Do you see that if I use this distribution or this idea that I'll actually end up with the same result? I'll end up with 12 plus 20. Another way to show this is sometimes using these arcs. I'll show you what that kind of looks like. This is like saying four times three and then four times five. That's that distribution property that they talked about. Distributive property is mentioned here. So another way to show that is with this multiplication and just see if it checks out. Now someone else is gonna say, I noticed that we could do PEMDAS here instead. And it's true, you could. You could take three plus five to get what? Eight. And that eight is still in parentheses because the four is right next to parentheses. And secretly, I hope you remember that means we're going to multiply. This is that invisible math. I bet you can find that poster in the back of my room right now. So four times eight is actually 32. Oh my gosh, it checks out. I see a 32 here, I see a 32 here in my checking, and I also see that 12 plus 20 over here would get me 32. Notice they all check out. The check is true. Check. The thing that I want you to notice is that this is factored. This is a final answer. There's a way to check it. There's a way for us to do this distribution with these arcs or this multiplication in front of parentheses, or there's a way to think of it in groups, my chihuahuas and my jelly beans over here. We're going to take a look at another one where it says journal reflection. So let's go there next. This is on the bottom of page 15. So you hopefully are in the same spot with me where it says journal reflection. I can see I need to move my toolbar a tiny bit. Let's go ahead and read together. Which method will you use to express 24 plus 18 as a product of the greatest common factor of the numbers and another sum? This is extremely wordy, but I notice a couple things. It mentions product, which means we want to show some multiplication. And here it's talking about the greatest common factor. Remember, we're going to factor out the GCF. And then it says, and another sum. So inside parentheses, I'm going to have these leftovers in a minute. So I'm really just turning these words into something that I like to call factored form. We are going to factor the expression. Let's give that a try. Well, secretly off to the side, you're probably saying, I know what 24 plus 18 is. Awesome, find me that sum that'll be helpful for checking in a minute. It won't be our answer, but it will be helpful for checking. So eight plus four is 12, do a little regroup. Looks like we should get an answer 42 in a little bit. So we're just gonna kind of keep that in our thinking. Well, the method that we saw earlier is that we're supposed to actually find the GCF of 24 and 18. Well, you could absolutely do some trees. So we'll try that method first. 24 is the same as, I don't know, 3 times 8, and 3 is prime. 8 is not. 8 could be broken down into 2 times 4, 2 is prime, 4 is not. 2 times 2 will get me 4, and both of those factors are prime. 18, well, that's the same as maybe 2 times 9. And I'll circle the 2 because it's prime and break down the 9 into 3 times 3. Uh, both those numbers are prime, so I've circled them. With all good trees, we should chop them down or at least line them up. So let's do that. 24 is the same as, in order, 2, 2, 2, and 3. Make sure I have them all. 2, 2, 2, and 3. Good. Remember, we show multiplication here in our factorization. Next, we take 18. 18 should be the same as 2, 3, and 3. 2, 3, and 3. And we'll show multiplication again. You can test these out if you like. We know 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Check. It gets us back to the beginning number, this product. How about here? 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. It checks out. Well, we're looking for the greatest common factor. And I am kind of trying to save myself some room to show you another method in a moment. But to find the GCF using trees, we have to find some pairs. These are pair trees, of course. So I notice they both share a 2. I notice that they also both share a 3. And even though there are a couple twos here, notice I can't circle them. Those came from the same number. They came from the same product or composite number, 24. 
So let's just take what we have here, the pairs of 2 times the pair of 3. And I only record them once, remember? So it's like bundling your pair of socks into one bundle. Bundling a pair of socks into one bundle. We're making only one group. So we record them one time. All right, 2 times 3 is 6. That really tells me what number I can divide into both of these. I could divide 24 by 6, it's the GCF, and 18 divided by 6. Well, if you remember the format for this, we use a line for the GCF. We show how many suitcases we're going to fill with chihuahuas and jelly beans. Two of my favorite things. Well, the greatest number of groups we could make was six. That goes on the front line. That's your number of groups or your GCF. Well, how many times does six go into 24? Hopefully you'd say four times, so I'm going to record a four here. There's four chihuahuas in each suitcase. I don't suggest you try this at home. And if you take a look, six goes into 18 how many times? Three times. We've factored out, we've divided out that greatest common factor. And this is what they're looking for in an answer. This is factored form. Now, earlier I didn't show you that exactly. I said, hey, look back at the leftovers. Well, inside the factorization of 24, there are a couple twos that we didn't use. What would I have to do with them to get back to this leftover 4 or this factor of 4? Oh, that's right, you'd multiply them. So here I'd multiply 2 times 2 gets me 4. Those are the remaining factors, the leftovers. Take a look here. There was a 3 that I didn't use. Well, there's nothing to multiply it with, so I just record it. Now, long ago, we talked about 24 plus 18 giving us 42. We want to see if it still checks out. So one way of doing that is doing PEMDAS, parentheses first. What's 4 plus 3? Hopefully you say 7. So here I have 7, and out front I have a 6 right in front of parentheses. It looks something like this if I'm checking. 6 in front of a 7 in parentheses. We'll think back. This secretly shows multiplication. What is 6 times 7? 42. Check. These match, don't they? So we're supposed to talk about which method we used. You might talk about the tree method if you did this with me. But I'm going to show you another method in case you're looking for something like that. And I like these ideas of the idea of ladders. I think you'll like it as well. So 24 and 18 on a ladder. I don't have to build two trees. I can just build one awesome ladder. Do remember that when I'm trying to find the GCF over here, I have to choose prime numbers. So we're going to try a ladder. So find a space for that. Let's try the ladder method just so that you have the option if you like. So what prime number goes into 24 and 18? Maybe you'd say well, 2. They both divide by 2. They're both even. 2 goes into 24 12 times, and 2 goes into 18 9 times. We record it. And then we have to check, do we build another rung? Only if there's another prime number that goes into 12 and 9, and there is. They're not both even, but I know they both divide by 3. 3 goes into 12, it goes in there 4 times, and 3 goes into 9 3 times. Well, 4 is composite, 3 is prime, but I'm really asking myself, should I draw another rung? Do they divide by another prime number that they have in common? The answer is no. So I want you to take a look at what we have here. Where can I find the GCF? We've talked about this before a little bit. Not a lot, because not everybody in here loves this ladder idea. But the GCF is on the left. It almost rhymes. GCF on the left. So if I were to multiply 3 times 2, I would get what? 3 times 2. I'd get 6. 6 is my GCF. That's the greatest number that divides into both of these. So again, I'd show that GCF on my line. 6 groups of. And I want to show you my chihuahuas plus my jelly beans, because I like to pack go on vacation. Uh, if you notice, 6 goes into 24 four times, and 6 goes into 18 three times. The awesome thing about this ladder method is that your leftovers, your remaining factors, are on the bottom. These are the leftovers that they talked about earlier, okay, the remaining factors. And you don't have to worry about multiplying back again to get to 4. It's already recorded that way for you. So again, final answer. You could check it another way. What is 6 times 4? Oh, you'd say that's 24. And hey, what's 6 times 3? Because the 6 is right in front of parentheses. I know that's secretly multiplication happening there. 6 times 3 is 18. Isn't that what we wanted? Didn't we want 24 plus 18? Yeah, that's the original problem. You are supposed to explain your strategy to me. So if you are going to pause my video for a quick minute, especially with my guest teacher here one day soon, um, you'll want to put this on hold, and you'll want to explain what strategy did you use. What did it mean to write the product of the greatest common factor of the numbers and another sum? And you could talk about the words factored form. So to find the factored form 
of two numbers being added I something 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 don't stop there but maybe do pause the video for a quick minute get down to your thoughts make sure you try to describe what you did and maybe if you use that check method how it works and then we'll come back and uh, I'll try to finish up my writing for you in just a second Well, hopefully you've had some time to think and work. Hopefully I've been on pause for a little while. I'll finish this thinking with you, just in my own words. And I don't expect you to copy down my thinking. I'd rather see your own. To find the factored form of two numbers being added, I first had to do what? I first had to find the GCF, or the greatest common factor of both numbers. So let's think, what strategy did we use for that? Well, I could talk about the first strategy just because I know most of you prefer trees. So I used a factor tree for 24 and another tree for 18. When I was done, what did we have to do with those factors? When I was done, I circled all the prime factors on my tree, right? Both trees, actually. Next, what do you have to do with all the trees we chop them down. Of course, if you write that in your math on the M step or something, they'll have no idea what you're talking about. They don't know Schumann well enough to get it. So we're going to have to put this in words that are a little more mathy. So next, what do we do? Next, I ordered my primes from least to greatest. Isn't that what we hope you do? You take those prime numbers and order them? I found a pair of twos and another pair of what? So what do we do after we find those pairs? We found a pair of twos and threes. Oh, we multiply, or I multiplied them, right? I multiplied. 2 times 3 to get a GCF of what? Oh, that was my GCF of 6. Oops. Come on, pen. My, ten, my pen is kind of tired here. Oh, let's see if I can try to straighten that out. Oops, I was going to write that means, but apparently I forgot what I was going to write when I was over there. So, that means... I can make how many groups? What's the most number of groups we can make out of 24 chihuahuas and 18 jelly beans? Oh, I can make six groups of, and the leftovers, of four plus three. You could go on to talk about how you checked. You could go on to talk about kind of a scenario that we call these six, our groups, our suitcases, and what you packed in them if you really want to tell them how you were thinking about the problem. I'm not sure that you just want to talk about chihuahuas and jelly beans without giving it a little bit of meaning back to math. But anyway, it helps me remember kind of what we're doing. We're making as many groups as possible. All right, next we're going to take a look at page 16. We're going to see what's happening on page 16 with GCF and maybe multiples soon. So page 16, go there now. Here we have another example, and if you remember, when it says use the greatest common factor with the distributive property, they're going to ask me to find factored form. So here I have 18 and 45. We're going to build some trees. As soon as we're done, we could pull out the GCF and write the leftovers in parentheses. So same idea here. I want you to build your trees for 18 and 45. 
When we're done, we're going to pull out the GCF, and anything that's left over as factors, we're going to record in parentheses. So again, the big hint here, product. I want to show that multiplication, which is sitting right here between the parentheses and a number out front. And the GCF is what we pull out, so we're going to factor out a GCF. And the leftovers, well, that's talking about another sum. That's what's going to be in my parentheses in a minute. Uh, trees, real quick. Well, 18 is the same as 2 times 9. 2 is prime. 9 is not. 3 is our prime. I'll circle them. Moving kind of quick here. If you need to pause the video so that you can try it on your own, that would be a brilliant idea. That would make sure that you know how to do it on your own. Let's take 18's factors and order them from least to greatest. The smallest being 2. Next we need 3. Last we need another 3. And remember, factorizations get some multiplication. How about 45? Let's put them in order. I see a 3, another 3, and then a 5. And factorizations still need multiplication. Do we see any common factors when we look here? Do they share anything in their factorizations? Well, I see that they have a pair of 3's here and another pair of 3's. Anything else? No, that's it. So if I was looking for the greatest common factor, I want you to think about what we would do here. We would record that first bundle of threes one time, and that second bundle or pair of threes a second time, or just one time, I guess. And three times three gets me nine. That's my greatest common factor. What that means is I can pack nine suitcases. I'm getting ready for my trip. I can make nine suitcases with the same stuff inside. I'm gonna pull out nine groups for each of these numbers. Well, you might say to yourself, you know nine goes into 18, twice, that's your first leftover term, and 9 goes into 45 five times, that's your second leftover. I hope you also see that that's located somewhere else. Here in my factorizations, this 2 is remaining, and so is this 5. We could test this out. We could absolutely add 18 and 45. I get 63 for an answer. What do I get if I do parentheses first? Well, let's see. 2 plus 5 is 7, and out front I have a 9. What secretly is happening here? Oh, I hope you remember that's multiplication. Will I get the same result back? Yep, it checks out. Another way of doing this is to build these beautiful arcs and try to multiply. So first I'd multiply 9 times 2, which is 18, and next I'd multiply 9 times 5, which is 45. Doesn't that get me back to the original problem? Perfect. It checks out in a lot of ways. We are ready for slide seven. It says we're going to learn about common multiples of two whole numbers. So we're switching gears a little bit. We just reviewed GCF and used it in a new way to look at factored form of an expression. Next, we're gonna take a look at slide seven. We get to practice some multiples. Let me clear this for us. And we're ready. Again, this is on page 16. Slide seven, it says learn. Find the common multiples of two whole numbers. It actually tells me to find the first two common multiples of 8 and 12. So for multiples, I'm looking for multiplying. It kind of sounds similar, doesn't it? So when I hear this idea of multiples, I know I need to multiply. And probably one of the most basic ways of doing this is to show a multiple list. We're going to use a listing method, multiple list. Some of you might say, hey, this looks familiar. I've done skip counting before. That's exactly the right idea. This is like skip counting. So let's give it a try. For the multiples of 8, we're actually counting by 8s. So we would say, let's start with 8 as our multiplier. okay? And we'd say 8 times 1 is 8. I want to make sure you show me that first factor. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 5 is 40. Uh, 8 times 6 is 48. Let's see if I can get another one here. Uh, 8 times 7 is 50. Six. Um, how about eight times eight? We'll stop there and see if we can find a matching multiple in a minute. This would continue, and I might need to continue someday, but for right now, this is a good start. Now it tells me to find the multiples of 12. I'm not going to start that over here. I'd rather stack them up. I'd rather look at them stacked right on top of each other. So here, I'm going to use 12 as my multiplier or my rule. So what is 12 times 1? 12. What is 12 times 2? 24. Stop freeze, I see something. Do you notice anything? I hope you're seeing this now. There's a 24 in both lists. We found a match. Well, that would only be the first common multiple, also known as the LCM, the least common multiple. We found it. Or the first.
common multiple. There it is. But how many did they ask for? Do you remember? Oh, they wanted two. Not just the first, but the first two. So I'm going to have to keep on going with this idea. So I'll switch back to my pen and just see if we can find something else. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times 4, check your charts if you need to, is 48. Stop, freeze. I hope you see it. What's happening now? Well, they both share 48. You just found me the second common multiple. I continued this pattern and I found a second one that matched. So my answers here would really be 24 and 48. We could do this all day. We could find the first 3,000 multiples or something along that line. Usually they're going to limit it to maybe the first two, three, four, or five multiples. Do you notice anything about these two numbers? I kind of hope you do. Do you notice anything about 24 and 48? How would I go from 24 to 48? Someone might say, oh, you add 24 to it. So true. It's kind of like doubling the LCM. So if I want to find the second common multiple, I can double it. Same thing here. Well, to get to 20, from 24 to 48, I can double that also. It works. I also notice a pattern. Sometimes I like to say skip, skip, boom, skip, skip, boom, skip, skip. That means that this next multiple, if I would come up with it, should also match. Down here, there's a little different pattern for 12. It goes skip, boom, skip, boom, skip, boom. In a minute, if I wanted to check, I should be able to get the third common multiple here. There's a lot of patterning that's happening with this skip counting or this multiple list. I want you to move ahead with me where it says journal reflection. So we're going to try another one of these where you get to choose a method that might work for you. And the only method that I've really shown you so far is a multiple list. So that might be the way that we approach this one. Journal reflection on the bottom of page 16. Which method will you use to find the first two common multiples of 6 and 14? Well, obviously, we would probably do that skip counting method. It worked for us before. So I'm going to start with 6, and I'm also going to include 14. And I'm going to stack them so that I can kind of compare them a little bit better. Huh, I don't know my multiples of 14 real well. We'll see how this goes. We might need a second strategy. So let's count by 6's. 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4, 6 times 5, 6 times 6, 6 times 7, 6 times 8, 6 times 9, uh, 6 times 10, 6 times 11, 6 times 12. I'm going to hope that maybe I found one. Let's give this a try. Well, next we're counting by 14, so it's like 14 times 1, 14 times 2. You might have to check your chart here. I think 14 plus 14. No match yet. 14 times 3. Well, that's 30 plus 12 more. Uh, 14 times 4, it's 40 plus 16 more. Oh, I don't see anything matching. Um, okay, that was times 1, 2, 3, 4. How about 14 times 5? That's 50 plus 20 more. Aha! I noticed something. It got a little bit scary for a minute. I wasn't sure if I was heading in the right direction, but if you take a look, we found a common multiple. The first common multiple that I see these two numbers share is 60. So here it says, find the first two. Oh my gosh, I have to keep doing this. Skip, 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 boom. That's a lot of skipping. I'm going to have to go a really long ways to get there. Or do you remember something I showed you a moment ago? Wasn't there a way that I could go from the least common multiple or the first common multiple to say the second common multiple? How could I get there without doing all the skipping in between? Oh, couldn't I double it? What is 60 times 2? Well, 6 plus 6 is 12. Keep those zeros behind there. 120. 120 would be the next common multiple. So I'm going to explain for you how I did that. I'm going to explain for you now in writing that I started with multiple lists. I kept going with my multiples until I found 60 in both lists. And instead of continuing the pattern for the next five pages of math, I decided to multiply the LCM or the first common multiple, or the least common multiple, times 2 to get to 120. The first two multiples of 6 and 14 are 60 and 120. So I really walked you through, I talked you through what I think you should be writing. You might want to pause the video. You might want to take a minute and talk with your table partner. You might want to touch up your thinking here so that you have a good explanation. And as soon as you're ready, 
after maybe pausing the video, you'll want to start back up and I'm going to show you another way to get there that you might prefer. It might be helpful. Hopefully you're starting things back up again. I want to show you another couple ways to get to the LCM of 6 and 14. I know you love trees, so we're going to try a tree method. I also know some of you kind of dig, oops, that doesn't help with that in a way, does it? Some of you kind of dig this idea of a ladder, and I think the ladder might be helpful in this situation too. So I'm going to show you two more methods. There's probably room down at the bottom of page 16 to try these, but this way you have some options, okay? So those of you who love trees, let's do it. Six is the same as two times three, and both of those are prime. 14 is the same as 2 times 7, and again, both are prime. So we're going to look for first the GCF, because we already know how to do that. We pull out what's in common. So I'm going to list 2 times 3, or, oops, that's not what I meant to do. 6 is the same as 2 times 3, and next, 14 is the same as 2 times 7. And now I'm ready to talk about the GCF. So the GCF, what do they have in common? Oh, they both share a 2. 2 is the greatest common factor. Well, here's the problem. They don't want the GCF. What do they want? Common multiples. So I'm going to have to use more because they're talking about multiples. So I'm going to use also the leftovers. What is 2 times 3 times this leftover 7? Well, 2 times 3 is uh, 6 times 7 is 42. I feel like I didn't find that in my answers earlier. I feel like I made a mistake. I'm going to go back here and kind of try to undo and erase. Well, that makes me think that we did something wrong in my multiple list. I must have missed something. A lot of erasing going this way. Ah, I had them both and I didn't see it. I hope you caught it. You hopefully just stopped the video and said, hold up, we see something. You didn't mention it. It actually looks like 42 is the first LCM. So in this case, 42 is the LCM. That means that my 60 is off. I must have done something wrong here. So I'm going to double check. 42 plus 14 gets me 56. Plus 14 doesn't get me 60, it gets me 70. Plus 14 gets me 84, and so on. So I had an error here. I don't feel good about that. I um, probably should have proofread this before I started the video. So it also means my 120 is off. We need to back up. Um, this is the reason why multiple lists are not always reliable. Because if you make an oops, it really affects things. You'll get wrong answers. So if I know 42 is my LCM, I should have doubled back. That's going to change what we wrote down here. So I'm sorry, but we got to backtrack. The first two multiples are going to be 42 and something else. So let me again get you back to this idea of trees. Maybe this will be more reliable. That's kind of why I wanted you to see it. So I do apologize that we kind of moved here. So I'll try to set up my trees another time for you really quickly. And remember, we write out our factorizations in order. I don't doubt that if you're with my guest teacher, you have to sub or <laughs> pause this and give the sub a chance to get things back on track, right? Give you a chance to fix things up in your notes. So my GCF is 2, but I'm going to multiply it times the leftovers. So that really means my LCM oops, is 2 times my leftovers. Let's give this a try. That's 2 times this leftover 3 times this leftover 7. If I remember correctly a minute ago, we said that's the same as 6 times 7. Oh, 42. It's the least common multiple, also known as the first common multiple. It's the smallest multiple that they both share. 42. Well, this is awesome. There's my first multiple. How would I find the second? Oh, we could double it. How would I find the third? Oh, we could triple it. How would I find the fourth? We could quadruple it, and so on. They didn't ask for all of those. They really want the first two common multiples. So it looks like we're going to use 42 and, well, 42 times 2 is 84. We need to use both of these numbers in our answer. Oh, I'm sorry about my error earlier. You can see why a tree might be a really good idea. But what about a ladder? Will it work? It will if I don't make more mistakes. Is there a prime number that goes into 6 and 14? The answer is yes. They're both even, so I'll divide them by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. I don't see anything else in common as far as a common prime factor. So I really am sitting here looking at my GCF on the left. Remember it rhymes. GCF on the left. Well, there's nothing to multiply, so my GCF must be 2. 
And do you remember how these were the leftovers? These were my chihuahuas and my jelly beans earlier when we were doing factory form. Well, they're still my leftovers, but I'm gonna have to multiply them to get an LCM. I'm gonna use everything in this L to find the least common multiple or the first common multiple. So whatever two times three times seven is will get me my LCM or first common multiple. Two times three is still six times seven is still 42. I'm gonna get 42 here. Well, that's no good. I need more multiples. What if I need the second common multiple? Oh, I could double it. I could take 42 times two and find 84. What if I need the triple it? I could find the third common multiple and, I, and so on. So again, sorry about my error earlier. 42 and 84 look like they are your first two common multiples. And I do think that trees and ladders might be more successful for all of us. On this next page, page 17, they're asking me to find common multiples of two whole numbers. So again, we could do skip counting by threes and fives. That would probably be pretty safe because we probably know our threes and fives pretty well. Um, there's another way that we could go about finding common multiples. We could try trees, although both those numbers are prime. That's interesting. Or we could try a ladder, although again, both these numbers are prime. So maybe when our numbers are smaller, this idea of a multiple list is not terrible. I am not going to put my multiples of five over here and my threes over here. I'm going to put them together stacked so I can compare them a little bit better. And that way if I need more room, I can just keep on going. So I am showing my multiples in a multiple list. That is one good strategy that might work, especially when I have two prime numbers. So I'm working with two primes. So both are prime. Probably not too bad to count by. Hope it goes better than last time. Oh, uh, let's see, this was three times seven, so three times eight. 3 times 9, and so on. This is a list, so I'm showing it with commas. Let's try counting by 5s. 5, 10, 15. Ooh, stop. I don't want to miss this. I missed something like this earlier, and I don't want to do it a second time. Hopefully you notice that they both share 15. The LCM, or the first common multiple, is 15. Now, if you went to try this on your trees or on your ladder, you wouldn't really be able to break things down. On my tree of three, well, nothing, three is prime. And on my tree of five, well, I can't even break it down, it's prime. So if they don't share anything in common, what did I end up doing? Oh, I had to multiply. Come on, Tom, you can do it. Three times five actually got me to that first common multiple. Here's the problem, they want me to find the common multiples of two whole numbers, they don't tell me when to stop. So I guess we get to keep on going. All right, this is like a problem that will never end. So after 15, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, and then 25, and then 30, and then 35, and then 40, and then 45, and then 50, and so on. But oh gosh, I ran out of numbers up here, so I have to get going again. This was three times nine, so three times 10 is 30. Ooh, stop, I see something. Hopefully you see that there's a 30 in both of their lists. And if you remember a moment ago, we talked about how to get from the first common multiple to the second common multiple. How do I go from 15 to 30? You double it. I could keep on doing this idea. I could do this all day. And I also notice another pattern happening. If you notice, it goes skip, skip, boom, skip, skip, boom, skip, skip, boom. I'm hoping that 45 is gonna check out next if I keep this list going, and it probably should. You'll also notice this, that there are skip, 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 boom, skip, 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 boom. I'm skipping four every time before I get to the next common multiple. Now this is a really big math problem because they never tell us to stop. This could go on until you turn 1,004 years old, and that's quite a long time to keep working on this. So what I want you to see is that it is possible to find the first common multiple and then find any of the following common multiples. What if they actually asked a question? What if they said, find the ninth common, sorry about my nine, multiple. How would we go about doing that? Oh, well if we know the first common multiple is way over here, it's this 15, I take the LCM times its ninth position, right? So this LCM was actually 15 times nine. I can answer this pretty quickly. Too bad they didn't give us a cool question like this. We'll just answer it anyway. Well, nine times 10 is 90. 
Nine times five is 45 more. So 90 plus 45, I think we're gonna get an answer of 135. If they asked, I could do this all day, but I really don't want to. I wanna be able to find a concrete answer depending on what they need. So maybe they asked me for the first three common multiples. 15, 30, 45. Maybe they asked me for a specific common multiple. I'll find the first common multiple and then multiply up to get it. On the bottom of page 17, I would encourage you to pause the video. I'd encourage you to take a minute and see if you can find me the LCM of 6 and 9. And I will ask you before we start, are they both prime? The answer is no. So a tree or a ladder might be a really good strategy. Or if you can count by your 6s and 9s, you'll be set. So again, I would pause the video. Either you can use a multiple list if you believe those numbers are small enough and safe enough to count by. Or maybe you want to try a tree or ladder. When you're ready, you can start things back up to kind of check and see if we're in the same spot. I decided to make trees to find my LCM. So quickly breaking these down, with all good trees, we line them up. We look for common pairs, and I notice they both share a three. So I just found the greatest common factor, didn't I? The greatest common factor is three. Well, how do I move from the greatest common factor to the LCM? Hopefully you look back and you say, oh, you take the greatest common factor times these extras. So in this case, three was my GCF, and there's an extra two and an extra three in the factorizations that I didn't use. So whatever three times two times three gets me. Three times two is six times three is 18. 18 is the first common multiple. Actually, it's the LCM. Maybe you didn't try this method. Maybe you tried counting by sixes and nines. You should find exactly the same great answer. And maybe instead you decided to try the ladder. So real quickly, we will try a ladder method. Remember, what kind of numbers have to go on the side? Primes, prime numbers. So the only prime number that I can think of that goes nice into six and nine is three. Three goes into six twice, and three goes into nine three times. I don't think I can break down two and three much more. So my greatest common factor is on the left, GCF on the left, here it is. But I need to multiply that times all of the extras, and the extras here are on the bottom. Or I can box in with some really crazy block letters, this L for LCM. So I'm going to take this GCF times my extras at the bottom, or I can just multiply everything in the L. So whatever 3 times 2 times 3 is, and if you don't like that because of the order, you can change it to 2 times 3 times 3. I think we're going to get the same great LCM. And LCM, oh, it's just the first common multiple. So another word for LCM is first common multiple. Ooh. Let's take a minute and see what happens next. So we've looked at just finding common multiples, and now we know how to find the smallest or the first common multiple. This idea really continues on the next couple pages. So I'm not sure that I will have us finish these notes, um, not in the video necessarily, but maybe on your own, you could write out the multiples of six and then the multiples of nine to find common multiples, not all of them. It looks like they just want the first one, two, three. And when you're done, you'll choose the least common multiple, also known as the first common multiple. These two things should match. Down at the bottom, they ask us for a little more writing. So if you are with my guest teacher, um, my guest teacher will make a decision about whether or not we are going to do this journal reflection. You have three possibilities. You could use a multiple list. You could use factor trees. You could also use a ladder method. That really takes us to the end of the session. The only other thing I want to point out to you is on page 29. Will you please go to page 29 now? Page 29. I don't know if you have spotted these math maps in the back of your notes packet, but I want you to maybe just take a quick minute and make some corrections for me. I already kind of wrote on here a little bit. This is a student's packet that they left behind the thing, so I have one to show you tonight. I'll try to move this a little bit. So notice that Sometimes we can learn math examples just by looking at something and seeing a pattern, seeing what's happening there. So what I want you to notice on page 29, we're supposed to be finding the least common multiple. That's what they asked for here. And this was misprinted. Someone wrote GCF here, and we need to change that to LCM. I'm looking for the LCM, or least common multiple, 
of each of these situations. Now there's really no math to do right now on this page besides the thinking part of it, right? I don't actually want you to solve these problems. They've done it for me. And they did a good job down here. They actually labeled the LCM. They found those. This looks good, 12 and 21 and 40. I think these look okay. What I want you to notice is how they got there. So if you're struggling on your assignment today or tonight or the next day when you're looking back at this and you're like, I don't remember how they did that, here's a tree method. When I'm given 2 and 6, oh, I see an error right here. should be 12 and 6, it looks like. So it looks like this page really needs some revising. But they took 12 and 6 as trees and they broke them down. It looks like they did circle my primes. I think I agree with that. They found the greatest common factor and they multiplied those pairs together. 2 times 3 got them 6. And then any other prime factors that were remaining, well, there wasn't that extra two. That's how this worked. So I'm using a visual. I'm looking at someone else's work to try to figure out what the strategy might be or how it will help me. Notice the next one, two, three examples show us how to find LCM using a multiples list. And I had trouble with that earlier in my video, so I sure hope you know that you have to be cautious with that one. If you're not finding a match or you go and check it a second way, it might be really telling that this is a harder strategy for some of us. So LCM, they wrote out the multiples of 3, the multiples of 7, and the first one that matched for both was 21. That's the first common multiple, also known as the LCM, or least common multiple. It's the tiniest one. Here they did the same idea, counting by 8s and 5s. The first number that they both shared was 40. And this one's kind of neat because 8 is composite, 5 is prime. So we're kind of pushing you a little bit. Sometimes we're given two prime numbers, and if that happens, looks like we end up multiplying them together, doesn't it? But if I have a composite and a prime, I don't end up necessarily multiplying them together. Oh, maybe we did to get to 40. What happens over here? I have two composites. I have 4 and 10. Well, they did this multiple list. And boy, I didn't get 4 times 10 is 40. The first common multiple is 20. That's because of the greatest common factor. There's a shared factor between the two. So I'm looking at just their strategy and trying to learn what the conclusion might be. So if you sneak ahead here, it says conclusion. I would encourage you to fill this out real quick so that it's done in your notes. And this way, if you need to take a look back, there are some solid examples up top. Well, if you made those, those necessary changes with me. So conclusion, to do what? What are we trying to do here? Well, we are trying to find the LCM of two whole numbers, meaning we're trying to find the smallest common multiple, right? So what did we have to do? What's the rule? We could talk about the tree rule, or we could talk about the multiple list rule. So I can use factor trees to find the GCF and oops, multiply by any extra factors. Or, and we'll give this a giant or because you have another option, or I can use multiple lists and find the first, oops, it's not a factor, it's a multiple that matches in both lists. Or, if you remember, you also could try a factor tree. Or I can use, I said the wrong thing, a factor ladder, a factor ladder, um, and we multiply everything, well, maybe we say all the factors, Boy, I'm having a hard time typing tonight. Factors in the L of the ladder to find the LCM. Okay, so you have three possibilities. Down at the bottom on page 29, they're asking you for your own example. So I'll give you a minute to jot this down. If you run out of room, you can write outside of the conclusion thinking, okay? Yeah, I had room. I had to kind of steal from down below. You can do the same. Well, when you're done filling out your conclusion, I want you to take a quick minute and I want you to try your own example. So I wouldn't choose really crazy numbers. I choose something kind of reasonable. Maybe with my guest teacher, uh, you will decide on some numbers together. So I'm trying to think out loud here for a quick minute. What's something we haven't seen? So something a little bit bigger, but not too crazy. Um, maybe we would say like 24 and 36. And okay, we're looking for the LCM of 24 and 36. So these are big enough that I would not want to count by them. I would not want to do multiples. I could definitely do two trees, or I could definitely do one quick ladder. I think this number is going to be relatively big. Notice I'm not looking for a common factor. 
these numbers are actually going to multiply. So I definitely chose something a little bit bigger and challenging. Maybe with your guest teacher, you'll choose something different, but do make sure you're finding me multiples, not just the factors. We're looking for our least common or smallest common multiple. With this, I think you're ready to start your assignment. So I'm going to clear our objects here and I'm going to try to get a copy of that out for you. So here is your assignment. It comes from Lesson 1.3, Common Factors and Multiples. If you remember the other day, I already had you work on Common Factors and GCF. So today we're going to work on the other sections that you haven't seen yet. So I want you to fast forward here to numbers 9 through 18. That's where we're going to look right now. Notice number 9 and 10. I told you we want to factor the expression. That was found in your notes today. So express the sum of each pair of numbers as a product of the greatest common factor of the numbers and another sum. Most popular wrong answer, students love just to take these two numbers and add them together and write down a result or an answer. That would be very dangerous. That's not what they're asking for. They're asking me actually to factor these. So let's try that. Um, I'm not sure if this is very clear. I'll try to focus Ziggy for you real quick. I do suggest you use some line paper, so for that reason I'm going to try to draw some box space a little bit, and we'll try to park that right about here. Okay. So I think I'll look at one of these with you, and then hopefully you'll be ready to do the other one on your own. So this should be on your assignment, on your line paper, we should tell you what assignment it goes with. This is part B of the assignment, because we are tackling numbers 9 through, I feel like it was 18. 9 through 18. It's covered up right now with my box, but I think this is true. I better see a name, date, and hour over here on your line paper as well. So number 9. Let's go ahead and get this labeled so that I know what it belongs to. I have 42 plus 105. Well, these are pretty big numbers. I know that we saw a couple methods to do this. I really want to find the greatest common factor. While I could build a t-chart, I know that they're not terribly reliable with big numbers. So let's try maybe trees or ladders instead. 42, well, check your chart. That's the same as 2 times 21. 2 is prime, and 21 can be broken down into 3 times 7. Both of those numbers are prime. 105, well, I know it divides by 5. I think it goes in there 21 times, but do check your chart. And 5 is prime, 21 is not. 21 is the same as 3 times 7. With all good trees, we should chop them down. So I'm going to write 42 is the same as 2 times 3 times 7. And with 105, we know that's the same as, in order, 3 times 5 times 7. You do want to do a double check and make sure that they work out. I think we're in a good spot. And we want to look for common pairs. And they both share a 3 and they both share a 7. That would be great if we wanted the GCF, right? And we do. We want to factor out the biggest number. We want to make the most groups or the most suitcases that we can out of chihuahuas and jelly beans. So 3 times 3 is, oh, I didn't mean to do that. So. These bundles of 3 I record one time. These bundles of 7 I record one time. My GCF is the same as 3 times 7, or 21. I'm going to be able to make 21 groups. So I'm going to record that kind of like we saw in our notes. I'm going to have the GCF sitting out front. The most suitcases we can make, with everything being identical inside, is 21. Well, how did we figure out the leftovers? We had to go back to our factorization. We had to look for anything that was not circled or didn't have a match. So in this case, there's a leftover 2, and there's a leftover 5 from the second term. We could test this and see if it works out. We could add with PEMDAS, the parentheses together first, 2 plus 5 is 7, and then I'd say 7 times 21. Well, it gets me 147. Do you get the same thing if you add these two numbers together, the original sum? It looks like we will. Another good check for you is to make sure that the leftovers can't be divided again. They don't share any other common factors. So this is what they're looking for with number 9. Number 10, I want you to take a risk, but when you're done, please remember, I'm going to see a GCF with those leftover factors inside. We are writing factored form of an expression. So you might want to try again these trees, or you could always use a ladder. I'm going to fast forward to the next section here. They're asking me for the first three common multiples. Well, I know for a fact that you are probably fine with some of these smaller numbers. Counting by 3s and 8s probably not too scary. Counting by 4s and 9s, I bet you've got. 
But I'm going to take a look at number 14 with you real quick. I want to remember the numbers though. 12 and 28. So number 14, the numbers that I'm given are 12 and 28. I could use trees, I could use a ladder, I could use a multiple list, but I don't really know my multiples of 28 really well. So I know that didn't work well for me earlier. I'm going to make sure that I'm heading in the right direction with this. But I also am just double checking. How many multiples am I looking for? The first three. So I'm just going to write over here the first three multiples so that I can kind of remember I'm trying to answer three of them. Well, in order to get this started, we could build a couple trees. 12 is the same as 4 times 3. 3 is prime, 4 is not. But these twos are. 28 is the same as 7 times 4. 7 is prime, but 4 is not. And our trees are complete. But with all good trees, we should chop them down. So we line them up here. 12 is the same as 2 times 2 times 3. And 28 is the same as 2 times 2 times 7. And I look for what they have in common. First, I pull out the greatest common factor. Oh, the GCF. That's what I've been working on the last few days in class. I can find that with 2 times 2. I know that 4 goes into both of those numbers. But because I'm looking for the LCM, what I take is the GCF times my extra factors. Come on, 10. Extras. So in this case, it means I'm going to take that 4, my GCF that I pulled out, and I'm going to multiply times this leftover 3 times this left, leftover 7. So 4 times 3 is actually 12. 12 times 7 is going to get me my first common multiple. 12 times 7. Hmm. Oh, maybe you know this fact. 84. 84 is the first common multiple, but I want three of them. I'm trying to make a multiple list. There's no way I want to start counting and skip counting for 12s and 28s if it's going to take me until 84 just to find the LCM or the first common multiple. So what did I tell you we could do? What's a shortcut to go from the first common multiple to the second? We could double it. And what do I do to get to the third common multiple? We triple the original, the LCM or the first common multiple and we'll be able to find it pretty quickly. This is just a hint to get you going on number 14. Again, you're missing two more multiples. I found you the first, so go ahead and double it and then triple it. Let's take a look at the next section. So this next section says, I just want the LCM. And here it says I can use a multiples list, or I can use a tree, or I can even use a ladder. So I'm just going to take one that I think looks a little bit nasty. We're going to take a look at number 18. So I might remind myself on number 18. We're looking for the LCM. I'm not looking for the first three multiples, just the LCM. I'm going to try this a different way for you. I'm going to show you a ladder really quickly. You don't have to try this method. You could absolutely use trees, it says. You could use a really careful multiple list, but I would never do that with 25 and 20 personally. I don't think it'd be safe for me. I want to think of a prime number that divides into both. Well, I know they both divide by 5 because 1 ends in 5, 1 ends in 0. 5 goes into 25 5 times, and 5 goes into 20 4 times. 5 and 4, they don't share another common prime factor. So I'm going to box in my LCM. I remember that everything in the L will get me the first common multiple. Really, I'm taking my GCF over here times the extras on the bottom. So 5 times 5 is 25, times 4 is 100. We just found a common multiple. The first common multiple is 100. 100 is the LCM. I really advise you to try either the ladder or the tree method for these. Find me the first common multiple or the least common multiple. This is really where we stop with this section. So again, uh, I'm looking for you to finish these problems, numbers 9 through 18, for tonight's assignment, and it will be due the next time I see you. So 9 through 18, due the next time I see you. Do look back at your notes. Do use some good examples to kind of help you through this. And um, again, hopefully you'll have uh, a good time looking through what we've done together and choosing a strategy that's strong and will work for you.